find the exact value. All right, so for each of these little expressions, they want us to find the exact value. So I want you to pay attention to this first, and then we're going to talk about other ways to get the answer. But the basic idea of a logarithm is basically you're looking for the appropriate exponent to apply to the base so that you get the answer they've given you. So for example, they're saying in problem A, what power do you need to raise 8 to in order to get 1? So let's think about that. What power, right? What power? So that's the question we're trying to answer. What power do you raise 8 to to get 1? Well, what's the answer to that? Well, of course, it'd be 8 to the 0 power, right? That's equal to 1. So that means the answer for this must be 0. And actually, anything raised to the 0 power is 1. So that means that the log of 1, no matter what the base is, log of 1 is equal to 0, right? OK, so that's one way to solve that type of a problem. You could do the same thing for b pretty easily as well, right? This is log of 3 base 3. So they're saying, what power do you need to raise 3 to in order to get 3? What's the exponent that has to go here? Well, of course, the exponent is 1. 3 to the first power is equal to 3. So we'd end up with 1. So again, we have a general rule then that says if you have log of, say, b, b here, the answer is always going to be 1. You should be saying, what power do you have to raise the base b to to end up with the answer of b? Well, of course, no matter what b is, b to the 1 power is equal to b to the 1 power. So 1 will always be your answer in that circumstance. All right, you can solve c in the same way using that same statement, right? So 4 is our base, and we're asking basically, what power do you have to raise 4 to to get 16? Well, the answer for that, of course, is you have to raise it to the second power. If you raise 4 to the second power, you will get 16. So the answer here is 2. So again, what is the log asking for? It's fine trying to figure out this exponent. It's trying to say, what's the appropriate exponent to apply to the base so that you get this answer of 16. Now where things get a little harder to do in your head is for problems like this. With a base of 1 half, you know, you could start to think about it. What power do I have to apply to 1 half to end up with 8? Well, it's a little bit complicated. You might pick up on the answer as negative 3 if you're thinking about it. You're able to do some work in your head simplifying. But the point is, is it ends up being pretty difficult. So what we want to do instead is to use exponential form as an alternative. Okay, so for this type of problem, for a problem like example D, I've added another note here in green. And the note says, to use exponential form, set the log equal to x and write into exponential form. So what we mean by that is simply set this guy equal to x, and then remember how to write it into exponential form. We drop the log and we switch these two positions, right? So we're going to end up having 1 half raised to the x power is equal to 8. And then what you have to do is solve this exponential equation by basically saying, hey, let's write both of these two pieces in the same base, right? So 8 is related to 1 half in that 1 half and 8 both can be written into a base of 2. So I could certainly say that 1 half, if I bring the 1 half up, will become 2 to the negative 1 power, right? To the x power, because remember that if this is 2 to the 1 and you bring it up above the fraction bar, the exponent becomes negative. And now 8 we know is 2 to the third. And from there, we basically can go on to say that if I multiply these two exponents together, the negative 1 and the x, I'll have 2 to the negative x power is equal to 2 to the third. And once we have the common base for the two terms, we can then drop the base and just say the exponents must be equal. So that means negative x must be equal to 3. Therefore, x must be equal to negative 3. And that's your solution for the problem. So ultimately, x here is negative 3. So what power do you raise 1 half to to get 8? You raise it to the negative 3 power. All right, let's do the same for these other ones. Um, it's a similar idea again. Whenever they're complicated like this, you want to probably just put them equal to x and then drop the log and rewrite by switching these two positions. So it'll be 5 to the x power is equal to the third root of 5. Now. 5 to the x is in a base of 5. And if we rewrite this as a rational exponent, I can bring this 3 around here to become the denominator, right? So it'll be 5 to the 1 third power. And then because we have a common base, we can drop the base and say that x is equal to 1 third. All right, so what power do you raise 5 to to have it be equal to the third root of 5? Well, basically, the power is 1 third. All right, so a similar thing for f. We'll set it equal to x. Then we'll drop the log and switch, right? So we end up with 3 to the x is equal to 27 under the square root, right? But 3 to the x is then going to be equal to 
27, again, if this is a square root, we can bring this around and make it what? If that already has an exponent of 1, it'll become the denominator of that. So it'll be 27 to the 1 half power. And then we can certainly say that 27 has a base of 3. We can say that that's 3 to the third raised to the 1 half power. And then from there, of course, it's 3 to the x power is equal to, if we multiply these two, we end up with 3 halves, right? So 3 to the 3 halves power. And then finally, because the bases are the same, we can drop the base, and we can just say that x must therefore be equal to 3 halves. So x is equal to 3 halves is our solution. Or in other words, we raise 3 to the 3 halves power to have it be equal to the square root of 27. All right, and last but not least, we have g. To solve g, we basically, again, do the same thing, but we might want to rewrite ln as what? Log base e, right? And if we do that, then we'll have log base e of the third root of e is equal to x. And then we would drop the log and switch these two positions. So we say e to the x is equal to the third root of e. And as you know, we can rewrite that third root of e as e to the one third, right? And so then basically we have a common base. So the exponents therefore must be equal. So x must be equal to one third. So if you raise e to the one-third power, that's the same as taking the third root of e, and of course we know that to be true.